Hello everyone, welcome to Chess Wiser, your wise choice to improve chess. In today's video, I am going to show you one of the famous queen sacrifice game in chess history by Rashid Nashmedinov. And this game was played in 1962, Chigorin Team Cup. And uh, Rashid was handling the white pieces and uh, black pieces was handled by the Alak Chernikov. And this is the first video in the Queen Sacrifice Games playlist. So I will be covering more games in future. So if you are new here, kindly consider subscribing to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the future videos. So without much delay, let's get started. So Rashid opened the game with the e4. Chernikov played c5, the Sicilian defense. Knight f3, knight c6, d4. Uh, c takes d4, knight takes d4. Here Chernikov played g6, opting for the accelerated variation of the dragon Sicilian and the knight c3 by Rashid. And after bishop to g7, Rashid played bishop e3. I think with this move, uh, he is hinting that he is going to play queen to d2 and then queen side castling, maybe to exchange the strong bishop of black side. But here uh, he played knight f6 and then uh, bishop to c4 adding more control of the d5 square and here Sir Chernikov simply castled on the king side and Rashid played bishop to b3 dropping the bishop to a safe square to avoid any tactics on the bishop later. So here again uh, Chernikov played knight to g4 a tactical move uh, for an exchange. So after queen takes g4 here comes the knight takes d4 and he played a, a queen to h4 avoiding the discovery by the bishop. So again, uh, Chernikov played queen a5, pinning the knight and uh, involving the queen into the game early. So, and immediately Rashid uh, uh, castled on the king side and broke the pin. And here, uh, Chernikov played this uh, move, that is bishop f6, and here comes the first twist in the game. So normally, uh, if we are white, what we will play, like maybe the queen h6, after bishop g7, we will come back to queen h4, maybe we... We will repeat the uh, moves and get the draw or if we avoid the repetition then uh, let's say after bishop f6 if we play queen g3 black would sacrifice his uh, queen on c3 and once we recapture he will pick up the queen like this and in the end he will be better so rashid decided not to go down this line and also he did not uh, want to repeat the moves and settle for the draw with the white pieces so he made this unbelievable queen sacrifice on f6 in the 12th move of the game and here uh, Chernikov did not uh, take the queen right away rather he gave this uh, intermediate check with the knight uh, first uh, trying to give up the knight in his own terms uh, which also under develops our c3 knight and before we check the game move here uh, if black tries the counter attack like uh, knight takes b3 after a takes b3 queen takes rook we can go or we can take on e7 and also we are preparing some mating attack uh, around the dark squares so queen has to come back for the defense so after queen a5 bishop h6 again we are threatening mate so queen has to go back to the d8 square and if you look at this position carefully even uh, white can play knight to d5 and white is completely winning in this position so going back uh, here he played knight e2 check uh, after knight takes e2 then he accepted the queen sacrifice uh, here uh, Rashid's plan is very simple and effective uh, he has to bring back the knight and he, uh, he wants to put the knight on d5 so as per the plan he played immediate knight c3 and here uh, Chernikov played rook e8 knight to d5 centralizing the knight and creating the fourth threat and here black should not uh, blunder his rook here by grabbing the free pawn so he played rook e6 and here bishop to d4 renewing the threat of capturing on f6 with a check. So the king must defend on, uh, on f6 so he has to go to the g7 square. So after king g7 uh, here it's natural uh, to bring a one, one of the rook into the game. So he played rook a d1 trying to add more pressure on f6 uh, by the plan uh, he, want, he wants to lift the rook to d3 and then to f3. Finally, Chernikov tries to activate his bishop by d6, rook to d3, bishop to d7, rook f3. The rook reached his destination. Here, finding the defense is very difficult for black uh, and uh, at the same time, he must be very, very careful. Uh, but there is one move to consider that is rook to e5. That is the main defensive move. But he played a bishop to b5 
which attacks the rook but rashid completely ignored that and he played bishop to c3 attacking or counter attacking the queen and then the queen goes home so here rashid took on f6 with the knight uh, here uh, we have multiple response for uh, black let's check the greedy bishop uh, bishop takes f1 then we can go knight g4 check after king g8 we can play bishop takes e6 after f takes e6 and knight rook h6 is a checkmate or the defensive move uh, was to play rook to c8 when the knight moves to give the discovery we can simply take the bishop which gives the discovery but in the game he was uh, he, he played a different move totally different move and he played bishop e2 this time he is forking both the rooks and here again rashid completely ignores the threat and played this uh, crushing knight sacrifice on h7 now the bishop is giving the discovery so the king must react to the uh, check so if chernikov immediately captured the knight then this line would lead to another mating attack so first we can give this check on f7 Please note we should not give the check on h3 because of bishop h5. If we give uh, check on h3, if not bishop h5, then it will lead into a, another mate. So after king g8, then uh, rook to the corner, it's a checkmate. So after rook takes check, uh, rook takes f7 check, uh, king has to go to h6. And uh, I think uh, this black king is not going to survive longer in the uh, open position. So he did not capture the knight, rather he played king to g8. Uh, rook h3 by Rashid, uh, rook e5, trying to exchange this passive rook for the strong bishop. He played pawn to f4, uh, saying move away and give me the dark squares. And here he captured the other rook, which was hanging for a long time. So after king takes f1, rook c8 again he is chasing or he is trying to pick up the bishop. So he played bishop to d4. And after b5, and here it's completely winning for. Uh, white and uh, here he started the whole uh, combination with a knight to g5 after rook to c7 here he played uh, bishop takes f7 a yeah, classical uh, bishop takes f7 move uh, it's very classical move you know so after rook takes f7 another decoying move on h8 so after king captures h8 and finally knight f7 poking the queen and the king after king moves knight takes d8 rook takes e4 knight c6 defending the piece and then rook takes f4 check after king e2 black resigns here in this position uh, chernikov resigned for two reasons uh, one is considering these scattered weak pawns and another one reason is that the knight and bishop will always be better against the rook because these two pieces can attack one square twice but the rook can only attack or defend only once and that is why this is a winning end game for white so that's why he resigned the game here so what do you think about this game? Let me know in the comment section below and thanks very much for watching this video till the end and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and still if you have not subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to get notified for the future videos. And as usual this is Chess Wiser, your wise choice to improve your chess.